was going into South Sudan in the terrible war which raged from 1989 to 2005 when an Islamist, that's the radical yes. military form of Islam, um, when an Islamist president took power by military coup, al-Bashir, and declared jihad, and used the word jihad, against the peoples of the south and the Nuba Mountains. And that was a horrendous war. Um, three million were killed, five million displaced, tens of thousands taken into slavery, and the needs were legion. So we went quite a few times, but on one occasion, um, there's a good friend of mine who's very experienced in security matters, and he kept phoning me and said, don't go, don't go, do not go this time. And um, I said, I've got to go, the needs are real. And he even phoned me on the way to the airport and said, don't go. On that occasion, we were actually accompanied by a BBC crew who were doing a film about our slave uh, redemption. And so I said, well, it's not for my decision, it's my decision for the team. So when we met as a team, I said, I've had this very serious reason. And I asked my advisor, why are you so adamant this time? And he said, well, for three reasons. One is because the Egyptians are now helping, the Egyptian army now helping the Sudanese army. And they have very sophisticated uh, radar tracking equipment and very sophisticated missiles to bring down planes. Um, he said, but they also have very sophisticated people on the ground and you'll either get shot down or you'll be buzzed down and forced to land or they'll know where you are when you've landed and they'll bomb you. So don't go. Mm. So Sounds I shared, like sound advice. <laughs> but I, say, I shared this with the team and I have huge respect for the team. But when I was sharing this with the team, we had a message, a crackly message on the army sort of um, radio links. And it was from the chief of the area where we were going to rescue the slaves. He's an urgent message. Okay, I've got these hundreds of slaves on here. I've already killed one bull to feed them. I've got no more food for them. When are you coming? You're a day late. Well, that for us was a mandate to go. Yeah. So we took off. And the other scary thing about it was that normally when we used to fly in to South Sudan, there are a lot of other aid planes flying around going to the legitimate places and other aircraft. So you just mix and match with all the other planes at the last minute, you snuck down to your illegal des destination. Well, on this occasion, um, all planes had been grounded because the government of Sudan had attacked a plane on an airstrip uh, down in the south of Sudan, and that plane had been quite badly damaged. And so all planes had been grounded. So we were the only plane up in the sky as a possible target for all the things I'd been warned about, which made it an extra little frisson of fear. But we did go, and I'm glad we did, because we managed to rescue several hundred women and children who'd been enslaved, and we got out safely. That, <laughs> well, how can you embellish on a story like that? How remarkable. Fact is often uh, more challenging than fiction. Well, it was a little bit challenging, yes. <laughs>